This podcast is a proud member of the UUOP Network. Welcome to Season 4 of Rush of Fear Podcast, where we chat all things Halloween Horror Nights, Universal Orlando's premier scare event. Tonight, for Episode 7, we will be going through four out of the six of the brand new original HHN 33 house announcements. So now, let the mayhem begin. What a rush of fear. Hi, everybody. Good morning. It is bright and early here in South Carolina. We have been recording in the mornings lately, which is, I don't know if it's any better than us recording at night. We're still just as crazy. So bear with (laughs) us. But with me, I've got Maddie. Hi. And Kenneth. Hello. Thanks for having us here in South Carolina. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's so nice here. (laughs) <laughs> it is so nice. Yeah. I mean, you're close enough. You guys are in Florida. We've pretty much got the same weather. Oh, okay. I don't know. We had a mini hurricane yesterday. So. Did you really? Yeah. And I was uh, stuck outside for it because I was oh. working my ride. So I was soaked to the bone. I was. <laughs> it was great. N- I think I napped through that whole thing. I did not see us, yeah. any of it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So what happens a good time. when you get soaked like that on do like on duty? Do you get to go change um, clothes? I cry a little bit inside. Okay. Uh, get a little, <laughs> but yeah, add a little more water to the. <laughs> to, to yeah, the they'll never know. It's raining outside. They can't tell if I'm crying. Yeah, yeah. I can. Uh, I I went to go change on my lunch break because okay. I was not going to be able to make it through the rest of my day if I uh, if I was that wet. Yeah, I've actually was, never thought was about bad. that. Bad. Like, mm-hmm. what do those poor cast members and team members do when they get soaked and then they have, like, a whole shift to go? Well, most of the time we have our ponchos, but I was running around so much yesterday that I just – it I didn't have it on me, and I also didn't look at the radar, and the rain came out of nowhere. Uh, so it was kind of my fault, but it is what it is. Interesting. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. So – um yeah, let's jump in because we have a lot to talk about. Uh, it's yeah. as we said in the intro, we got four uh, on top of the two that we just got and did an episode about. Literally, they kept dropping announcements every single day all week last week. So mm-hmm. that's 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 a first, right? Like that's never happened. Uh, the what they've the only thing they've ever done before is drop everything at the same time, which is like they used to, but it wasn't like. It wasn't like this. It was just like the website would go live and everything was on it. That was before people were paying. That was before that as like, many people were paying the, as attention in this way. Yeah. Right. Well, and we did recently. Was it last year or the year before where they did a big drop? Um, and we actually had an episode called The Big Drop. But it was uh, it was like, what if, was that in like July that, or something? That was the last. It was, I think HHN 31. Um. I think so. It was all of the originals. Um, and it was the last yeah. thing yeah. that dropped. So they did I, I, all the IPs individually, and then they said right. everything else. Yeah, so, but that was closer. Like, that was towards the end of summer. So this is the first, like, big drop ever in May this early on, which is interesting because we all are always, like, all of us HHN fanatics are always like, we need more announcements. We need more announcements. La, la, la. And they're like, all right, here you go. <laughs> and they just gave it to us all at once. So it's very True. interesting. I'm looking it was for, for the uh... HHN 2021. Are you looking at the, the tracker? Yeah, I was looking at Gary. <laughs> I just <laughs> pulled it Twitter. up too. Gary um, put it on the Pangolin website. So if you go to pangolinfl.com slash HHN tracker, that's where you can find the entire history of the announcements uh, since 2012. Funny. Nice. So they did it for HHN 2021, where they dropped, just like kind of said, all the originals on, what is that? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August 12th. Yeah. August 12th, they dropped all of the originals. And then they also did it in 2022, where they dropped all the originals on the 16th of August. 
And then in 2023, they dropped uh, all of the originals on July 28th. It, it was all the originals plus Exorcist Believer and Monsters Unmasked. Yeah, it was a lot. That was that was huge. Um, and that yeah. was all later in the summer. So my guess is they've they're doing this because of all of the epic announcements that they also have to go through. There's um, epic announcements. There's the mega movie parade. There's DreamWorks Land. DreamWorks there's just Land. so much yeah. going on this year. Uh, so some yeah, yeah, like they had to consolidate this stuff. Yeah, it's an exciting time to be a Universal Orlando fan for sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this summer is going to be crazy. Yep, I can't wait. Um, all right, well, let's jump in to talking about our our houses. Maddie, you want to kick us off? Yeah, for sure. So just to refresh, in our previous episode, we were able to talk about Slaughter Cinema 2. And then right before we recorded that episode, we also got the announcement for Goblin's Feast. So we've chatted about those two. But like we've said, within the past seven days, we got all six of our original house announcements. So the first one that we got um, post our episode was Major Sweets Candy Factory. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Waldorf. Please get down off my desk. Thank you. Um, (laughs) Major Sweets Candy Factory. And the description is, you've been invited to chaperone a field trip to a candy factory. The deadly delicious treats turn the kids into sugar-fueled fiends. Um, and this one is a direct relation to our scare zone yeah. that we had in, uh, 31. Sweet revenge. 31. Yeah, mm-hmm. sweet revenge. Yeah. So it had that same little major sweets logo next to it and same font and everything. Okay. So wait, turn the kids into sugar. F- so are the kids in this house going to be the evil ones? I'm guessing. <clears throat> yeah, I think just like the scare zone, yeah, where it was like the because the whole premise of the scare zone was something in the candy was turning the kids into like crazy little monsters, and they were killing everybody at the Halloween parade. They were like killing all the parents or torturing the parents. Um, and I'm assuming that it's going to be the same kind of concept here, where bunch of parents take their kids on a field trip to a candy factory and then just like in the scare zone the kids eat the candy and then the kids turn into to little monsters (laughs) which i mean that is real life though (laughs) Uh, i'm seeing if there's anything additional on wiki about this this is based in truth i (laughs) yeah there i really i do miss when and I think I said it on the last episode too. I miss when we used to get the videos yeah. for each of the house announcements. Yeah. I feel like you got so much more information about the house and like, you know, the vibe of the house from those little videos. That's the And even back thing. when they used to like debut them on the website, because right now the website has nothing. Like nothing has changed on the website If you roll your mouse over where the little box that says 10 haunted houses, you can't click on anything. So I miss when it used to be like its own website separate from the universal website and it would give you more information on it as opposed to just the basic. Well, I wonder if they'll do the, um, the podcast, the universal, what is the name of the universal podcast? Discover Universal. Discover. Yeah. Discovery Universal, where they did like the behind the the story of the originals. That was that was nice. I liked that. I hope so. That would be good. Um, so this uh, all all the wiki says from HalloweenHorrorNights.Fandom.com is that it's going to be located in the Fast and Furious location. Um, if How do were, they know that? <laughs> I don't know, but they do. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> um, what? so it could be rumor but i mean they're usually pretty spot on um and the code name for this house if you were following the um spec maps was the one that was pi that makes sense uh were those names on the spec map the we we haven't talked spec map on the show we haven't um listeners may have noticed we we 
we are not as interested in speculating. Uh, we're, we're more just going to track the official announcements. But I did look at the maps, and I don't remember seeing those words, but I know that in within the construction, they give each house a code name uh, just to kind of help keep them secret, but then yeah. they always leak, and people do their uh, detective work and <laughs> connect right. the dots. Um, so Pi, I think, would have been like the construction code name. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, the project names and everything. Right. Exactly. Um, this says Lil Boo appears on Major Sweet's hat on the promotional artwork for the house. I haven't noticed yes. that. Did you notice it? Let me see. I think he always uh, was, oh, even yeah, in the there scare was zone. a Lil Boo. How cute. Yeah. On like the truck, the side of the truck in the scare zone where it was his logo, there was a Lil Boo as well. Lil Boo forever. <laughs> <Cute. laughs> awesome. Lil Boo for president. So what do we think yeah. about this house? I'm excited. Um, yeah. I I I loved the scare zone. I thought it was so cute and so fun. And the costumes were really good. And like the music was really good. And the scare actors loved that scare zone. Like everyone who was cast in that scare zone just looked like they were having such a good time all the time. So I hope it's I hope it's like cute and fun and still like kind of 1950s-ish, like the scare zone was and I don't know. Kind of like trick or treat where it was like all of the like the kids in the Halloween costumes. But oh, yeah. this one may be a little different because it's a factory. So Right. It, it was a I think very it's, beautiful scare zone with all the lighting and everything. Yeah. I think it's a good uh like concept for a haunted house. Um I think I feel like it's almost the next version of like the meat uh meets meets leave it to cleaver um that like in universe hhn lore company where we visit their facilities and everything is terrible um but it gives you know like willy wonka vibes and uh, i think that the willy wonka story is pretty scary on its own without the help of a horror creative team so i think it's a good <laughs> it's a good jumping off point and i you know i think it's gonna be cool <laughs> i didn't even think about willy wonka it is gonna be that glasgow willy wonka experience <laughs> <laughs> let's let's hope not <laughs> uh, but i have a feeling that our the creative team will probably like do some funny digs towards that whole issue probably. i hope so some little Easter eggs. Fun. Yeah. Um, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of this scare zone. I thought it was pretty. Like I said, I thought the lighting and the, the sounds coming from this scare zone, as far as like the music and stuff was very cool. I like that. It was like nostalgic, you know, trick or treating back in the day with a lot of the kids costumes were very like old fashioned, which was cool. So I like those aspects of it. Did I think it was like, scary at all not at all um not even for a person that would get scared of things like I don't I don't think it had a lot of scary factors it had like it was kind of like, like a funny scare zone to me so I, I'm anticipating this being a, a one of the the comic houses the comedy type houses not not necessarily scary what okay do you think? Yeah, I think it's definitely going to have some – out of all of the originals that we have so far, it's going to have some fun. Yeah. It'll be the most fun, I think, out, I don't of, know. out of all of them. Slaughter Cinema was all about just fun. Um, I think it – True. I don't know that this will be like the comedy house, but I think it will be a little bit more lighthearted than, than uh, some of the yeah. other ones. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. Let's move on. What do we got next, Maddie? Next. Oh, my gosh. This is the one that I'm the most excited for. Um, so the next one that we got was the Museum Deadly Exhibit. So the description is, you decide to visit the new folklore museum exhibit, The Rotting Stone, when an evil escapes from within, destroying everything in its path. Oh, my gosh. I, I don't know. Because... In the last history episode that we talked about, I want to say there was a 
there was like a museum exhibit kind of house from what I remember. But I also just love the concept of like a museum coming to life, like Night at the Museum or um, the uh, the the ride over in – what is it? Tokyo? Is it Disneyland Tokyo? No, it's Hong Kong Disneyland where like the music box opens up and like turns all of his – artifacts to life and everything like yeah I love that concept so like going through a museum where there's either a haunting going on or the exhibits are coming to life I just think is such a cool concept and this house specifically feels like a very vintage HHN idea like this sounds like something that we would be reading about in a history episode from like the 90s or the 2000s yeah so it i just i don't know it was the most intriguing out of all of them i was i'm very excited i i'm excited too because i've never gone through any house that's even similar to this idea so i love how original it is and i love that i really can't i I can't picture it like i think it's going to be really cool though whatever they do Mm mm-hmm I feel that way about a lot of these houses of just like, it's an intriguing idea, but the execution could be almost anything. And that's what I'm excited to see of like, what is this going to feel like? Like, cause a museum could also be like so many different things. So it's just like, I'm excited to see. That's why I do kind of wish we got those videos too, because that used to give us a good hint of like, Oh, this is what it's going to feel like. But with these, like, just logo artwork, I feel like it's just, I don't know, your, 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 our imaginations have so much more work to do of, like, ooh, what, what am I going to see in here? You know? I don't know. It's fun, and it's also yeah. just, like, I don't know what, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, need, I think we're going to see a lot of, um, of, I don't know how to describe it, like, graveyard games, or not graveyard games, um, Dang it. I I didn't take my Adderall this morning, guys. My brain is not working. Mm. Um, What is the scare scare zone that had the statues? Graveyard. Is it just called Graveyard? It was called Graveyard. uh, Deadly Deadly Unrest. unrest. Deadly Unrest. That's what I was thinking of. Um, So I think we're going to see a lot of like those statues that you don't, you know, or, or things that you think are still and not a person. And then as you get closer, they come to life. I think we're going to see a lot of that, not necessarily just statues, but maybe like paintings where you think that it's just a painting and then they do that crazy mirror effect or whatever and things jump out at you. I think we're going to have a lot of really creative scares in this house, which I really appreciate. Like those types of scares are really memorable for me. So Mm -hmm. that's what that's what I'm picturing in this one. I could also see them using, you know how um, Pine Straw Spruce, what was that house called? The uh, uh, Deadliest Steel, the Darkest Steel. Uh, Darkest Steel, yeah. That house had a lot of like lighting and like, you know, like magical things going th- through the air. I feel like this one could use a lot of that stuff too. Yes. Projection mapping on everything. Sure, yeah. Projection mapping, uh, lighting things like built into costumes like they did with pine straw and with uh the the deal maker whatever his name was the devil stand in Mm -hmm. the collector yeah yeah i mean everything that you're describing is the ride mystic manor from (laughs) hong kong disneyland (laughs) really awesome yeah so like the whole concept of that ride is there's this this older gentleman and like he connects to you know their tower of terror attraction over there and whatever like all the storylines are beautiful harrison hightower but he yeah so he (laughs) he collects all of these artifacts and everything from around the world and his house is basically just this like mini museum and each room is a different type of artifact so like one room has a bunch of like suits of armor from all across the globe and all across history and like another one is all of these beautiful paintings yada 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 and he has this little friend who's a monkey and the monkey likes to get into trouble and in one of his recent like journeys or whatever he finds this magical music box and when it opens it like makes everything in the house come to life with this little like projection mapping mystical pixie dust that rolls around. So 
the little monkey gets into trouble and opens the box while the the gentleman is like off doing something else. And so you're in these trackless ride vehicles moving through the moving through each room. And as you go into the room, the room is normal. And then as you kind of like spin through it, the little projection mapping pixie dust goes across everything and like everything comes to life. And then it's not until the very end where the little monkey is able to like close the box and then everything kind of goes back to normal. That's what you guys were describing, I feel like. (laughs) Yes. That is so cool. Just do that. Yeah. (laughs) Sans the monkey. Like, I don't know how the monkey would fit into it, but yeah. (laughs) Monkeys can be scary. (laughs) I am monkeys are terrifying. I am so scared of monkeys. So they can 100% be in a haunted house. Look at Planet of the Apes. That's Oh my god. Oh, Maddie. <laughs> They're scary. Have you seen a gorilla? Gorillas are so scary. Dude, I'm and... not scared of many things, but for some reason like monkeys and gorillas and everything in that family, primates are so scary to me. I don't no. know why. They're too people-y. It, it, yeah, two, I was going to say. In 2 years, I will be hiking with the gorillas. And I can't wait. That is cool. I that would that's going to be a really cool experience. Yes. I just <laughs> would be so scared. But gotta, you're going to have a great time. I got to wait for Krista to turn 15. But so, in 2 years, that's going to be There's us. an age limit? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yep. Makes sense though. All right. Goodness. Well, okay. I think that's a good spot for us to take a quick break to hear from our sponsor, Porky Vacations. I wish to go to Universal. Right. Off you go. We'll be to the edge of the Forbidden Forest. Where can our vacation wizards take you? Just tap the port key at portkeyvacations.com and let the magic begin. Welcome back. (laughs) Welcome back, everybody. So we're going to keep going. And uh, we still still have a a couple (laughs) more houses to get to. So, Kenneth, why don't you start us off this time? Uh, Michelle, where are you going hiking with gorillas? Oh. (laughs) <laughs> i just want to see if We're this connects no no i just want to see if it connects where Kenneth where is, is that still on there um i haven't 100 percent decided but it's either going to be it's probably going to be rwanda oh okay uganda is cheaper but why well i was wondering if you were going to go to latin america and visit the monstros the monsters of latin america <laughs> <laughs> no nope, i will be hiking in africa Oh, okay. Well, it might be better off because, you know, with La Muerte as your guide, you would be begging for piedad from these terrifying legends. Uh, Tlahuel Puchi, La Lechusa, and El Silbon. Uh, That's this house. Mm -hmm. Those are three monsters I've never heard of. Tlahuel Puchi. Um, from what I'm hearing, especially from my friends who live over in California, this is the house that they had last year. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hollywood. So, very excited. This house was in Hollywood last year. It was one of the most well-received houses maybe that they've ever had. It was a big, big hit. Um, I did not really? watch. Yeah. I didn't watch any walkthroughs of it. Um, oh, they're good. Usually, I only watch Hollywood walkthroughs of the houses that we also have just to see the comparison of how they interpreted these things differently. Um, but maybe after I go through this house here this year, I'll go back and see how they did it last year in Hollywood. Um, but I don't want to be—I mm-hmm. don't want to have any expectations going in. You know, I'd rather—I'd rather just go in blind. Right. Fair. Me too. The. The one thing that um, I was talking to my friend Jen when we got this house and they had a like seven foot tall animatronic Waldorf. Get down. Sorry. Um, They had a seven foot tall animatronic of one of these um, legends. I don't remember which one, but everybody said it was so scary. (laughs) So I'm excited to see if we get a seven foot tall animatronic 
Nice. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, Twila Pucci, however you pronounce that, is a vamp- vampiric, vampiric creature? I would think okay, that would be vampiric. vampiric. Yeah, um, that was featured in El Pueblo del Terror Scare Zone in Hollywood in 2022. And then it was in the house. And if you look okay. at a picture of this dang thing, oh my God, it is creepy. I'm going to go see if I can find it or if you can send the. Oh, yeah, send it to us. I can send it. The uh, link. My keyboard died just now. So I'm, I'm doing everything on mouse. Oh, no. <laughs> manually right clicking and hitting copy and then right clicking again to go paste. So while I, so I think I sent it to you. We'll see if it actually worked. Um, I'm going to read the backstory of this creature. So this creature comes from the Tlaxcala region. Sorry, guys, if you're from Mexico, I'm just totally destroying your language. Um, region of Mexico. It's a witch and a vampire. Some people believe that its story goes back as far as Aztec times. In the common lore of the Talpuchi is that anyone could be it and they would not know until they had reached their puberty. Oh. Uh, this oh. creature has a very spe- specific ceremony in which it transforms into one of a series of animals. The most common is a turkey vulture, which I believe is that picture I just sent you. And it would fly to a house of its victim and would suck the blood of its victim and not like any ordinary vampire. I don't know what that means, but... Ooh, scary. That's pretty cool. That is a cool picture. So I guess, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that one. So it could technically be like several different creatures. Ooh, okay. But turkey vultures are awful. So <laughs> yes, that is they're, definitely the scariest of them. I agree. I agree. They're so scary. I'm that's cool. The other room. Le, la lechuza. Let's talk about the la lechuza. That to me sounds like um, a food. I know, right? Like milk? <laughs> or like lettuce. <laughs> lechuga. Or, yeah, lechuga. <laughs> it's milk lettuce. Yeah. Um, the backstory. Oh, the la lechuza is a combination of an old woman and a witch. All right. So here we go. Described with vampiric habits. So very similar. And the ability to turn into a humanoid with barn owl features. So this seems very similar to the other one. Um, One of the many terrifying and creepy things that she can do is disguising her voice to mimic an infant to lure her victims in to capture and kill them. Oh. That's scary. Uh, In Central America. Yeah, heck yeah, it is. In Central America, they are known as La Chorca. And local legends of Honduras, Guatemala, and the north of El Salvador give her predilection that guys you're using way too many big words for this early in the morning um (laughs) for young men's blood and flesh and stealing babies from the arms of their mothers she could kill babies silently by using some kind of magic thread that she made pass through cracks on the roofs and ceilings she made sure the tip of the thread was touching her victim's head or belly button and then extracted the blood from there oh my god this one's a baby killer oh like la la rona yeah this one's re- oh, that's intense. This one's really weird. This is very intense. <laughs> okay, and then what's very the last scary. one? Very El Silbon. Um, El Sil- uh, Silbon, or translated as the Whistler, is a legendary figure in Colombia and Venezuela, associated especially with Los Llanos. Whoa. Sorry, an ad just popped up. Um, usually described as a lost soul, he was a stilt-walking scare actor that appeared in Monstrous Haunted House. Uh, I'm sending a photo. Of this one. Uh, the backstory. A common story known throughout Colombia and Venezuela was that there was a teenage boy living on a farm very far off that had fallen in love with a woman that his father did not approve of. As much as the boy's father beckoned him to not see this girl, the boy would still continue... Only until one day the father catches his son and the girl in his barn and file and flies into a rage and murders the girl in front of his son. The son in rage lashes and kills his father to avenge his lover's death. 
The grandfather of the boy comes home and sees what has happened and takes the boy out to the field and ties him to a post and whips him till the flesh falls off his back, then proceeds to pour limes and tequila, (laughs) of course, on the boy's wounds. And then when the worst was already done, the grandfather sends dogs to tear the boy apart. Good God. Oh, my God. As the boy stumbles into the woods, mutilated after his punishment, the grandfather hands him a sack of his father's bones and says that he is condemned for all time to carry the bones of his murdered father on his back, and the boy then proceeds into the woods, never to be seen again. Eventually, he came out of the woods as a creature known as El Silbon, which some say is a towering creature, 10, maybe 12 feet tall, who's skinny and continues to carry the bones of his father on his back and is known for his distinctive whistle. If people hear his hear this whistle and it sounds far away, it means he is close to the person. But if he whistles and it sounds very close, it means he's far away. Huh. Huh. Interesting. That sounds creepy, though. Yeah. So this must be the giant figure you guys are talking about. I don't know. I could see it being... Yeah, I think so. I could see it being uh El Pucci. Them, Being really, a seven yes. foot, yeah. Well, I'm on board. These so all sound scary. crazy. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be a scary house. I yeah. 100% agree. Let me look at pictures or something. Yeah. Um, and the from what I remember, so Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood is so cool because some of their entrances to the houses are just like some of their houses are just smack in the middle of their park. So the entrance to this house last year, I want to say was over by kind of the, that the street that then leads into the little um, minions area. And so they had built this beautiful, um, Latin American, uh, like graveyard scene where they have, um, it's not a temple, but it's like an above ground thing with all the candles up front. Like a mausoleum. There, that's the word. I am so, (laughs) I am so bad at words. Um, (laughs) yes, a mausoleum, a Latin American mausoleum that had beautiful candles up front and there was like a whole dirt path, like, like led you into the house and they had, um, La Muerta out front. So like you had a scare actor that was just doing stuff as you were walking into the house, but it was all outside. Ooh. And then like you would, you know, you would go past the, the the entrance, the facade of the house that was inside the park. And then I'm sure you would be in some like tent or soundstage or whatever. Um, but it was beautiful. So like during the daytime, you would just be like walking around Hollywood Studios Hollywood or uh, Universal Studios Hollywood. And there was just this Latin American mausoleum chilling there just in the park. <laughs> <laughs> but they had they had that scare actor. Um, out front, like welcoming you in, and I thought it was really cool. That's very cool. So, I'm excited about this one, like a lot. Yeah, yeah. these pictures that you just sent, which we should add those to the we. By yeah. we, I mean Maddie should add these <laughs> to our Instagram because the photos of some of these characters are creepy as hell. So mm-hmm. I'm excited about this house. I really think it's going to be really good. Yeah, I'm excited um, about this. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. I'm very excited. Kind of like El Chupacabra, I feel like. Um, yeah, it's along but, those same lines, but I wasn't a huge fan of Chupacabra. Oh, I hope this one, I think I this one's going to be better. Murder kitty. He I was, was a big so fan cute. of Chupacabra, but I think that there's definitely room to improve. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, and especially with multiple creatures, you know, mm-hmm. I think that, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of really good potential here. Oh yeah. yeah. A, a lot of potential for lots of gore too. Yeah. And it's and so just different. different vibes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All of these, all of these are so vastly different. I mean, we mm-hmm. go from like 
B movie to D and D goblins in the forest to murdering children. Well, children that murder to a haunted <laughs> museum to monsters of Latin America, and then to the next one, which also does not connect at all to anything. So this year, just originals alone, vastly different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be great. speaking of this next one, the final house that we have had announced so far is called Triplets of Terror. And the blurb says, you're invited to the Barmy Triplets birthday bash, but beware they celebrate by recreating their family's murders. Prepare for a gory gathering. Now, I haven't seen The Strangers, the movie, but a lot of people are saying this is similar. Is that true? I've also not seen it. Dang but it. I didn't <laughs> I did not think that that's what The Strangers was. But look up the like just images from the strangers and like the masks and stuff that they're wearing is very similar. I haven't seen the yeah, movie, I, but yeah, I think that's what people were saying was like the similarity. I don't know. I, I do need to watch it. It's on my list. I just haven't gotten there yet. My list is very long. Yeah. The artwork for this announcement any. reminds me of like anime. I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't watch anime, but like the images I see of like ads and stuff, this feels like it could be like a horror anime. Um, Fair. And just like the, this is the weirdest thing. I think this is the one that I'm just like the least uh, prepared for in terms of what to expect. (laughs) Yeah, it's so... It's so random. It is. Like, <laughs> and, like, not in a bad way. It's just, you know, we, the day before, we had gotten a house about monsters from Latin America. And then we get this, this, this other one. I at first thought it was like circus. Like, when you first look at the, the image, I, my vibe was like, oh, circus, interesting. But then you read the description and you're like, not not a circus. No. Not a circus. <laughs> Somehow a birthday party, but bad, a bad birthday party. <laughs> yeah. Um, when it was announced, actually, I, I saw you announce it first, Maddie, um, on, on ah. our page. And Perfect. my reaction was like, what the hey diddle diddle is this? <laughs> is this because I have yeah. no, <laughs> like, I have no idea. Like, what? And there's, and I'm looking right now and there's literally like, there's nothing. Like, we have no idea yeah. what this is. Um, all I, I did look up and just now and saw that the word uh, barmy means insane. So there's that. Oh, okay. But like makes sense i have no idea i have no idea what to expect from this house but it could be great i hope i feel like this is going to be the goriest house uh probably uh yeah i don't know it feels maybe like uh it will be similar to like a house of a thousand corpses where it's just like really intense gory like you know disturbing stuff yeah because we don't know how their family was murdered. Did they murder them? Did they watch the murder happen and now they're traumatized and strange? Did, oh, like, see, like I, what? Assumed, I assumed it was saying that like the murders that their family committed, like they just recreated. Oh, oh. I, I don't didn't know think about that either. Yeah. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. The three on the the three on the artwork look very scary, so I'm excited either way. But Th- this feels to me of I wonder the... if this will be a sound stage. Oh yeah, I have no idea. This feels to me like it could be the scariest original. Uh mm-hmm. looking at the rest of them. Yeah, I think this I think this is the one I, I'm expecting to be the scariest of these six originals yeah. that we have now. I I do like the comparison to House of a Thousand Corpses, though. That that makes sense in my head. 
yeah, we'll 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 see. This is the one. This yeah. is the one that I just have the least like re- point of reference. That that right. any that anyone has the least point of reference. I think of just like yeah. Okay, what is that? Mm-hmm. But I'm sure it'll be good. <laughs> mm-hmm. <sighs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. 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 I think this is probably going to be the one that really doesn't have a long wait ever because people don't know what to expect from it. Um, Unless it's and amazing, so it's probably going to be the and one then... like. And the word gets out. But I felt like Blood Moon was like incredibly amazing. And I don't know if it was because of its location or whatever, but I was pretty much always able to walk through Blood Moon without a wait. And I don't know why. Yeah, that's I fair. think it was the location. That front house, because no one ever really goes back up to the front unless you're leaving. So yeah. if you if it's the first house that you do when you come in, then like most people will do that. And then at a certain point, the line just dies because They're no elsewhere. one's really heading back up to the entrance. Yeah. Yeah. It's like kind of the most out of the way. The party's in the back, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I was at work until midnight 30 last night. So I'm mm. a little delirious. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, this was, this has been an exciting week. Like having an announcement every day was really, really cool. I kind of like it. Like I like having the info up front and being able to kind of do my research and and have plenty of time to do so and be able to look forward to it all year, as opposed to like spreading all of the announcements out one by one. I don't know. I think by the end of the week, I got a little numb to the announcements like it wasn't exciting anymore because it was just like oh yeah i know that one's coming i think part of the announcement season to me is less the what is being announced but more the like oh i wonder when we're gonna get another one and so like knowing that we were gonna get one the next day was kind of just like all right let's see what it is you know (laughs) type type of feeling yeah (laughs) and they were all being announced at like 10 33 a.m yeah yeah. So that was that was strange. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and now we get to wait for everything else. So we get to wait for potentially the four IPs and we get to wait for all the scare zones and the shows. So even though it is only May, well, almost the end of May, almost June, um, we do still have a lot more to get announced, which is always exciting. Yeah. Right. Right, right. Yeah. And it is nice that they are leaning on their originals. Like, you know, because normally they announce the IPs first and then the originals after because IPs draw in the crowds. That's what people are coming for. That's what they know. Yeah. But the this IPs. year they were like, you know what? Our originals are pretty badass this year. Let's do those first. That's what I think they decided. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are pretty badass. They are. They are very – I'm I'm always I, usually the one that loves the the originals more than the IPs, but – um, why do we think that they did that this time? Like, are they, have they not solidified? No, surely they've solidified their IPs no. already because we're only a couple months away from the event. Like, why are they waiting so long? I think this is what it is. I don't know. Right now they're doing the monthly or so videos about what the different lands and Epic Universe are going to include. So I think once they're done, cause we have two more worlds of Epic Universe that we need, uh, you know, full details on. And then w- once mm-hmm. they're done with those, then it's like, okay, now you can get excited about these IPs coming to Halloween Horror Nights. But they also didn't want to like wait all the way until then to start announcing things. So I think it makes sense of like, okay, while people are still excited about Super Nintendo World and uh, How to Train Your Dragon and everything else that's coming, Dark Universe... We can also get like the diehards, give them these treats, these things to think about and talk about with the originals that they're all going to love. But like the general public, the the uh, the more casual Universal fan, I think is not going to be paying as much attention to this. So their attention is still on the Mega Movie Parade, DreamWorks Land, right. Epic Universe, and then once all that stuff is out, then it's like okay, and guess what? boom, 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 these movies that you know are coming to Halloween Horror Nights. Mm-hmm. So it kind of sense. kind of like sp- spreads out the big news to be in separate times of year while still giving everybody something. 
Right. Yeah. That makes sense. I'm ready for them to drop their multi-night tickets too, just because I have so many people that need that need me to get those for them and I'm <laughs> you know just ready to tickets. do it. Ready ready to do it now. So let's let's get that announcement out next. Please, guys. Please. Yeah. Heck. We yeah. all know it's coming. So let's like just do it. Um, do we think true. Do we think they'll do IP houses next, or do you think that they'll still keep putting that off and do scare zones and shows next? I think they'll do an IP next. Maybe one IP and then the scare zones and show and then the rest of the IPs. Hmm. I want to know what the scare zones are going to be this year. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's always fun. And I feel like the scare zones are the thing we see most of just because there's no waiting. You just, you can just hang out there all night. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see if we're going to get an IP scare zone because we haven't had an IP scare zone in a hot minute. I think the last one was what? Zombie land. Oh <laughs> yeah. Don't let that be the last one. Personally. That I think was it was, wasn't favorite. it? Cause we got zombie land. Yes. Zom- well, okay. I have, I, I loved zombie land, but that's just cause I was a scare actor in that zone. Sure. Um, but in that year we got, Zombieland and Rob Zombie yeah. as a scare zone. And then also, kill, no, Killer Clowns was the year before. Yeah, we had the Trick or Treat uh, one. That was 27. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't think we've had an IP scare zone since HHN 29. What about, wait, what was that? When was the um, Crypt TV zone? Oh, that was, um, that was 30. Okay, so HHN 30. Okay. Because 31 had... All, all 31 originals. was all Halloween style. Yeah. Yeah. When was and the Chucky so scare zone? was last year. The good guy. That was 28. That was 28. Okay. Last yeah, year we we're, had... We're due for one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. What were the scare zones last year? Dark Zodiac... Uh, jungle. Vamp oh yeah, last 69. year was all. Yeah, they were all Doctor Oddfellow. Yeah. yeah. Shipyard. IP scare zone. IP scare zone. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm, so I'm just still waiting to see if we're getting Ghostbusters or Beetlejuice because I'm sure we're gonna get one or the other. True. Be a Did you watch the Beetlejuice uh, <clears throat> teaser trailer? No. Yes. Not yet. Ah, uh, Michelle, you got to watch it. It's I know. interesting. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it is interesting. I think they've got a lot of good stuff to work from this year as far as IPs go, and I'm just curious as to what they landed on. Um, yeah. I mean, surely we're going to have another Monster's House because those are just a hit every year. What do we think yeah, the Monster's House this year is going to be? I was talking to people at work about this, and we all came to the conclusion that we think it should be something relating to Dark Universe and the like Lady Dr. Frankenstein that we're going to be introduced to. Like, how smart of them, w- like, it would be so smart if they introduced us to this universe of monsters that we're going to get in another park in just a couple months now in Horror Nights this year. That, it is that would be so smart. It's the perfect year to do it because yeah, because this is the last pre-Epic Universe Halloween Horror Nights. So introduce us to those characters now and get us all pumped for that new park. What if yeah, that's yeah, a I dual announcement? They announced. They should call it they, Universal <gasps> Epic Monsters. Oh, hey, um, what? Well, yeah, it could. They could drop the Dark Universe info video, and at the same time say, "And meet these characters this year at <sighs> Halloween Horror Nights." That so would smart. be the smartest, but also the fucking coolest thing they could ever possibly. Oh do. yeah, yes. yeah. Wow, that's what I want. Hor- Hire us. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If that's not what they did, then they dropped the ball for sure. I know. I would either say I would want that idea as my number one option, but my number two option would be something relating to the creature of the Black Lagoon. I was going to say that. 
Yeah, he's had the least attention out of all of the other Universal monsters. Yeah, and I like wet have... houses. Like, I like the houses that have water effects and things, so that would be cool. <laughs> what a let's w- not even. What a let's weird just, let's just let Let's just let that go. Just walk <laughs> on by it, okay? Nah, I'm going to make it a sticker. <laughs> yeah, I like wet houses. I like wet houses. Add it to the bullet point list of the sticker that I still haven't made yet. Of the, that's a shirt. That's a shirt. Yeah. Oh my god. I think that's my first statement that's ever made it to a shirt. Yeah, I, like, I think so. I like wet houses. Um <laughs> <laughs> Have you have either of you yeah. seen the uh Creature from the Black Lagoon musical that was at Universal Studios Hollywood? No. Yes. Oh, oh man. my god. I it watched... was these it's it was so good but so bad at the same time. Yeah, it was only open for like 3 months <laughs> before it closed permanently. Um, Mm -hmm. but I watched it on YouTube for the first time, like last week. And, uh, that is a time capsule of, it's the most 2009 thing you could ever imagine. (laughs) Yeah. It was there the very first time that I went to Universal Studios Hollywood. (gasps) Like I, we somehow planned it that way. You saw it live? And so I saw it back in 2000. (gasps) I did. Oh my God. Wow. It was <laughs> crazy. And like 2009, I was probably in like middle school. Yeah, I was probably like in sixth or seventh grade, maybe eighth grade. Um, so well, like I had consciousness. I remember it. They had the boat I had and the boat would move around the stage. Like it would just kind of like zoom around this. It was it was very strange. Yeah. Very strange. <laughs> yeah. Weird times. Kind of like when they uh, brought um, – king kong to broadway or they brought spider-man to broadway yeah to like same vibes which or spider-man weird. also <laughs> to that funny. same theater where creature from the black lagoon was because they'd also did spider-man rocks which i also watched on youtube that same day uh that show oh, doesn't like tarzan rocks yeah it was called spider-man rocks and most of the songs were not rock songs and most <laughs> of the songs also did not move the plot forward at all it was just spider-man characters randomly singing uh, songs that were not related to anything happening on stage. Nice. Uh, I yeah, can do what a mess. All oh yeah. See, that was good. <laughs> Rogers. The musical was yeah. incredible. Spider-Man rocks was, uh, not <laughs> Tarzan rocks. However, fantastic. The, the gorillas rolled around on rollerblades. Oh my God. Yeah. That's, that's automatically great. Good. Yeah. That, good times. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully Creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what other monsters they wait, could. Wait, wait. Uh, so apparently Maddie's afraid of gorilla or monkeys, but n- not if they're on roller skates. Um, Correct? Yeah. Correct. Not if they are people <laughs> dressed up as gorillas okay. in a in a Broadway style musical at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Okay. What about. Understood. What about <laughs> King Kong on like Skull Island? Is that scary? Um, uh, he's kind of a good guy. He's big and scary, but he is cool. He saves the lady. Okay. And last but not least, Donkey Kong. Is that, is that going to be scary? Oh, no. Donkey Kong (laughs) is great. Have you seen the Mario movie? I watched (laughs) it last night. Her her fear of monkeys is very selective. It's only actual ones. It's actual monkeys. Okay. Any other, any other, totally fine. Okay. CGI monkey, great. Okay. okay. Donkey Kong monkey with a uh, a, a tie a tie <laughs> that wiggles his pecs, great. <laughs> All right, but but the shit the the shit throwing monkeys at Animal Kingdom, no no thank you. Yeah, no thank you. Okay, no thank you. <laughs> gotcha. Goodness gracious. All right. What other well, monster though? Do you? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, if they did Creature from the Black Lagoon, what other monster mix-up would you think that they would do? Or would they just do Creature from the Black Lagoon? Have We haven't... I feel like he's really the only main one that hasn't really gotten any attention. I think he and should have his since, own. Mm, yeah, well, yeah, maybe. I feel like that he's the last one. Yeah, I mean, there's like... Minor monsters, I guess, that we haven't done yet, but right of the big ones. The fact that like 
Hunchback was in a house before Creature. I mean, you know, since the first one that started this current run of Monster Houses, uh, he was there. Creature was there. But he hasn't made a return. And we've given the spotlight to Hunchback and uh, Jekyll and Hyde before we put it on on Creature, on Gilman. Yeah. Quite interesting. And even his his section of the original Monsters House like wasn't super big, but it was fun. It was great. And those those costumes were fantastic. I mean, it they felt, were like full body costumes. And it felt like the scenes in the Little Mermaid ride where you're underwater <laughs> and you look up and you see the bottom of a boat. Yeah. <laughs> and there was that random alligator toy that was just kind of like chilling. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Anyways. Kenneth, your <laughs> references crack me up. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Well, I think that we have talked around in circles and uh, <laughs> driven monkeys to the grave. So um, yeah. <laughs> I think that will do it for this episode. Thank you for listening. We will see you so soon in the fog. It's just, what is it, like 90 days or something mm. now? It's in the 90s. Days? Yeah, not long. Um, mm-hmm. So until next time, because we know we're going to have more announcements soon for more content, be sure to check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Rush of Fear and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Rush of Fear Pod. Yeah, for more general Universal Orlando Resort news, check out our friends and UUOP network hosts over at the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast, wherever podcasts can be found. And also check out the two other podcasts that are part of the uh, UUOP network that is going to be the Theme Park Duo and the Taste of Universal, also found wherever podcasts can be found. Uh, once again, be a part of each new Rush of Fear episode with our brand new listener submission segment. Just send Rush of Fear 21 at gmail.com an audio recording telling us your favorite HHN house, your favorite HHN scare zone, and then your favorite HHN memory. We're going to be doing a house and scare zone tally to see which one is the overall listener favorite. And then your favorite memory will be added to the outro of each new episode. Yeah. Be a part of a Port Key Vacations commercial. Just send in an audio recording of you saying, I wish to go to blank, and then fill in the blank. Then keep listening for your commercial to magically appear in an episode of Rush of Fear and UUOP. Email that recording to podcast at uuopodcast.com. Check out our brand new merch storefront and help support the show. Just head to www.tpublic.com and search for Rush of Fear podcast. You'll find our page and all our products. This storefront will be updating soon with new items. Yeah. And once again, be sure to check out Kenneth's band Pangolin everywhere you listen to music online and follow them on social media at PangolinFL. And as always, if you could leave a spooky rating and review on whatever podcast platform you're listening on uh it would really help us out and we'd love to hear from you the listener in all aspects of the show um and before we go here is our very first rush of fear listener submission hi kenneth maddie and michelle My favorite HHN house is Seeds of Extinction. My favorite scare zone is Trick or Treat. And my favorite moment of HHN was randomly meeting Lee and Tracy Malaby in real life as we each exited different houses that shared a soundstage. Yay! Listener submissions! Thank you! (laughs) Yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening, everyone. The podcast has come to an end. Now get out.
to weigh things out.